One issue we're gonna have heading back to school uh, after last year's craziness is kids are gonna be afraid. You know, a lot of them have been there just a little bit and some maybe not at all for over a year. They're gonna be concerned, they're gonna be anxious. And the best thing we can do is to start with rapport building. I'm Mark Barnes, co-author of Hacking Education from Times 10 Publications. One of our hacks we call the 360 spreadsheet. And what this is, is collecting data in a very simple spreadsheet format, but it's the right kind of data. It's not testing, standardization. It's the kind of things you probably already do. Asking kids, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are you afraid of here at school, in class, out in the hallways? Tell me about your home life, your family. Do you have a dog or a cat? What's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? Do you play a sport? Do you play an instrument? Once you learn these things and you put kids' names on one side and you put those categories on the top, you create a resource at your fingertips that helps you connect with kids. Imagine being able to walk up to that terrified child and say, I know that you got a cat last summer. You know, I have a cat. And to be able to connect on that level will help you get those kids on your side right away. They'll know you care about them first, academic second. Get yourself a 360 spreadsheet. I think you're gonna love it. I'm Darcy Bakigard, co-author of the Startup Teacher Playbook. As you start to organize all of the ideas and pieces of inspiration you're gathering from the What's Best for Kids conference, I want to help you think about how you're going to maximize your time and increase your impact. One way I found helpful to do that is to really focus in on making sure you're solving the right problem. As you gather all of this inspiration, start to think about what challenges, obstacles, problems do you have back in the classroom, back in your school, back in your community that you hope these ideas can help you address? Then do one of the following. For option number one, do a root cause analysis. The root cause analysis asks you to think about what are all the possible reasons that are causing this problem to occur. Then, as you look at and examine those possible different reasons, you can hone in on one and design a solution wherever you think you can have the greatest impact. Think about all of the tools, ideas, sources of inspiration you've heard about through this conference. What can you use to help you address one of those root causes? Option number two, impact versus effort check. You are only one person and you have limited time, so you want to make sure that whatever you're doing is as efficient as possible for you while having the highest impact possible for your learners. So take a look at this handy little chart and think about where does your project fall in this scope. Option number three, do an XY check. Similar to the root cause analysis, but a little bit different, the XY check asks you to think about, are you addressing the source of the problem or are you addressing one of the symptoms of the problem? So as you think about how you're going to implement some of the ideas and inspiration from the What's Best for Kids conference, are you able to address the source of the problem or right now, are you tackling one of the symptoms? For more ideas, strategies, and tips to help you turn your ideas into action, check out the Startup Teacher Playbook from Times 10 Publication. It's full of tools and resources to help you turn any PD inspiration into action and ensure you're continuing to do what's best for kids. Hello, my name is James Sturdivant. I'm the author of Hacking Engagement, Hacking Engagement Again, and teaching in Magenta. And I was asked to come up with a hack to help students transition back to in-person instruction. Now the great thing about being in person is you can collaborate one-on-one, -on -one, see people face-to-face. -face. The worst thing about in-person instruction is everybody's sitting on the rear end for hours and hours as the day goes by. So I'm gonna try to help. This is a hack called Meet Me in the Accord. Now the Agora was a central square in an ancient Greek city where people would come and collaborate and talk politics and do business. So let's clear out all the desks from the middle of the room. Then give your students an appointment book with three times, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. Then challenge them to come to the Agora and get 
appointments for each one of those times. Once they return to your seats, you can put up a provocative prompt, have them come in to the Agora and collaborate with each other about this prompt. See if they can work it out. Do that with each of those three questions and then, and then do a debriefing at the end. I think you'll find the students got to know one another better and they're energized and they thoroughly enjoyed the process. Meet me at the Agora. Give it a try. One of the issues that I see for the upcoming school year is that it's going to be one like that we've never experienced before. This year we've talked about the new normal and what we've had to overcome, but we're not going to go back to the past. We've changed so much, we've grown, we've used technology in ways that we've never even dreamed of. We've learned new techniques, connected with students in different ways, and realize that mental health and social emotional learning are so very important. I'm Christina Holsweiss and I'm the co-author of Hacking School Libraries. This year we need to rely on our school librarians more than ever. We need to support them so that they can create dynamic programs in their libraries, support the school culture, and collaborate with their colleagues. Our students need accessibility and equity in their education and the library is the largest classroom in the entire school.